Sky, you want to kick this thing off and then everybody can join in as they come. Yeah. So uh, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, we've been after having some of this uh, training and overview for a while now. Um, uh, Moody Jabber, one of our application engineers, has been gracious enough to uh, take some time out of his busy schedule to go through our uh, uh, JCI appliance, which is part of our um, workbench for Tritium and um, a whole tool set that will help you um, engineer more efficiently and um, more quickly as you're building your uh, Tritium stations and stuff. Um, so Moody, um, he's been doing some of this training here lately, so it should be fresh on his mind. And uh, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the intro there, Scott. Uh, my name is Moody Jabber. I'm an application engineer here at Johnson Controls uh, with a main focus on the Facility Explorer product line. Um, if we've met before, uh, hello again. If we haven't, uh, nice to meet you guys. Uh, the point of today's presentation is to is to show the total value of doing business with Johnson Controls and using the Facility Explorer product line. Um, and and really, it's going to be a live demo of the Facility Explorer workbench um, with uh, one slide. I promise I only have one slide to show you a bigger picture here. And I'll start sharing my screen. To show you a bigger picture, we'll take a step back outside of the Facility Explorer appliance uh, to show you the bigger picture of Johnson Controls Facility Explorer. I'll get my screen up here shortly. Um, hey, Scott, let me know if you could see it. I got it. All right. So uh, the name of the game with Facility Explorer is productivity. The name of the game is reducing the time required for you guys to engineer jobs. And I, I know we have salespeople on this call. Uh, do I have any engineering folks on this call as well? Or is what's the... What's the mix here, Scott? I should have asked. I think you've got a, a healthy mix of uh, technicians, Perfect. engineers, and sales. Perfect. Okay. So the total, the total value of the Facility Explorer product line is in the integrated productivity tool sets required to take a job from pre-sales to engineering to post-sales support and project turnover. And we do so in a very intuitive way, um, integrating our solution navigator platform with our CCT, which is controller configuration tool, with the Facility Explorer appliance, which is a set of productivity tools and graphic features built on top of the N4 Niagara platform, and then totally the commissioning process using the CWCVT and the incoming connected workflow application. This is the total value of Johnson Controls, where in Solution Navigator, a salesperson or estimator works to fully estimate a job. And this looks very similar to the CCT Q&A section when creating equipment, where an estimator or salesperson estimates sets of equipment in Solution Navigator and receives several outputs, data sheets of equipment selected, wiring diagrams, points lists, device schedules, equipment schedules, valve schedules, if dampers exist, damper schedules, a list of all the requirements for engineering submittals in PDF formats and Excel formats to increase that speed of doing business, where by estimating jobs in Solution Navigator, most of the engineering submittal documentation required for a full submittal package is an output of the tool. More importantly, CAF, CAF files, that should say CAF, sorry, CAF files for uh, projects are created, where AHU CCT CAF files are created, VAV box CCT CAF files are created. If a chiller was estimated, chiller CAF files are created. These files are then opened up in CCT, Controller Configuration Tool, where, as you guys know, some tweaks are required to be made uh, to meet total project specification. After CCT is used for CAF files, they're imported into the FX Appliance. The FX Appliance are, is our Facility Explorer workbench, where, as you'll see in a live demo, upon import of a CCT CAF file for devices, 
not only automatically are graphics generated that are totally interactive, these devices are auto tagged, their points are auto discovered, and their points are auto tagged via the FX tag dictionary. The FX tag dictionary is a variant of Haystack 4 tagging convention. We've built on top of Haystack 4. We fully support it using the FX tag dictionary and nomenclature. So this is the total FX productivity tool set. I want to I'll close my screen here to get into a live demo where I first want to show how the standard Facility Explorer appliance looks like, and then we'll get into those productivity tools. And if I, I know there's plenty of people here on this call, please put questions in the chat and I'll ask my teammates, Scott, or if anyone else on my team is on this call to help facilitate those questions with me. Um, we'll definitely facilitate those throughout the call. So the main home page of the Facility Explorer appliance is in a tiled approach. Uh, these are the newly developed home screen graphics that came at 1413. Um, you've seen variants of this in the past, but this is the new 14.13.2 release. It takes a tiled approach where the home screen is five tiles. Tile one is in the top left corner. Tile two is in this top right corner. Tile three here where my cursor is. Tile four and tile five. And if we look at each one of these tiles, the point of creating these tiles is for a facility manager or a build, building owner or an end user to very quickly navigate their station with as little clicks as possible. Tile one, as you can see, provides very quick access to spaces and equipment as we defined in tile one. Now these are bound ORDs to graphics and a standard station creation will leave this part blank for you to put back bounds in there. Then I'll click into that, show you guys graphics here shortly. Beneath the space and equipment navigation pane is this weather forecast pane, taking advantage of the weather service, where you can simply click on a location geographically, and a weather API will populate live weather data for a facility manager to see on their home screen. Here I have uh, Dallas Addison Airport is my current selected location, 64 degrees with thunderstorms. This is live weather data being pulled in via Weather API. Tile two is what we imagine the building of your customer to be. Maybe it's the wing you're working on, but this is the customer's building. Now I'll open up FX Workbench here shortly, but I just want to show you how this is fully editable. So I'll go into my FX server demo if it wants to open up here for me. Go in my route. There we go. This is fully editable. This is a PX view. I can change this picture to be my customer's building as you guys have uh, seen in the past. So let me go back to here to show you guys. Tile three is very quick links to station information that a building owner or facility manager would like to see. You'll see the JCI alarm council. All the alarms configured will show up here in this PX view of all the alarms in the station. This is fully interactive. All the alarm timestamps, all their sources, message text, source text, and so on um, with this info tab here. I'll go back home. Under there is alarm history, point groups, point group manager, and I'll go through a lot of this here shortly. All point summary. This is a quick link for your facility manager or building owner to click and see all the points that are online for your station. So you'll have the point name, the slot path, the point type, and I, I dragged too much to the right here, and the point value, a live view of all the points in the station. Now I do have a lot here, um, and as you can see, they're all laid out for my entire station. I'll go back home. Under that is the offline point summary, offline device summary. Quick links for a facility manager to go understand which points are offline and which devices are offline. Something that we imagine them doing the first thing they do in the morning. Go check which devices are offline. Here's the offline device summary. I have a lot of devices in my backnet network, and as you can see, 
they're all offline right now because I'm just on my computer station, my computer platform hosting the station, sorry. All the offline devices populate here. Device name, display name, the slot path, the device status, disabled, fault, and so on. This is fully interactive. I can refresh it. And after I've put a device back online, after refreshing, it'll not populate in that pane. Very similar is the offline point summary. Or maybe a device is online, but a couple points are not. They'll populate here in the offline point summary. All offline points will populate in the offline point summary. And you can use the slot path to understand what point is attributed to which piece of equipment. So as you can see, all these chiller plant central cooling points are offline. If I scroll down, effectively all my points are offline currently because I don't have any devices connected. Very shortly, I'll demo the JCI schedule manager, Wait, but on the home page. Go ahead. Was there a question? I'm sorry. Never mind. So on the uh, home screen, you'll see the JCI schedule manager. In the JCI schedule manager, as you can see, which I will demo shortly, is an easy way to create schedules and then link them to schedule points or enable points. And I'll demo that here uh, shortly, as I mentioned. Also on this tile three is source links for the JCI link manager and trend history data. Tile four shows all the Niagara drive, or sorry, all the network drivers. My station currently has a Niagara network and a BACnet network. Very simply, if I hit the BACnet link, my BACnet database opens up. All the BACnet devices, all their device IDs, all the networks they're on, MAC addresses, and so on. I also have links to all their extensions, as you can see here. I can go to the alarm extension very simply for that device. Three clicks from my home page. I'm all saying I won't call this monthly. So uh, system functions uh, gives you the ability to quickly back up your station. Tag view, which I'll click into weather setup to set up this weather API. Security dashboard and search widget. I want to hit the tag view just to show you guys a JCI unique feature called the JCI tag view widget. The JCI tag view widget opens the station up like a book where all the pieces of equipment show up here in the JCI tag view and all their tags are that are associated also populate. As you can see with this chiller plant, FX chilled water plant is a tag for this chiller plant. All the points for the chiller plant populate here for me with all the point tags, not only tag groups, but direct tags. And as I'll demo here in this call, these tags are done for me. I don't have to tag my equipment. I don't have to tag my points. These tag views are created for me. And I can scroll down. Uh, let's open up this mixed air single duct AHU. As you can see, it's tagged with FX AHU, FX single duct, FX mixed, and chilled water cool, for example, as well as all the points attributed to that piece of equipment. So that's a JCI tag view. And as you guys will do with your FX stations, very simply, you can search for, and I'll open up Workbench, a tag here I have FX occupied tag. I can search for it and all the equipment and points that are attributed to the FX occupied tag will show up here in my query that I just did. And you can apply these queries to other standard Niagara features that you guys use every day. I'll go back to my home page, go back here, go to root. I also want to talk about this security dashboard this is a security dashboard actually developed by tritium for niagara if you haven't seen it before we have a very easy quick link to it on the home page what this is doing is a full security audit of the station it's asking itself which vulnerabilities exist in the station and how can i alert the facility manager of which vulnerabilities exist in the station more importantly they're organized by security type I've got alerts, I've got warnings, 
OKs or just info uh, features here. As you can see in this FX server demo station, it's alerting me that TLS is disabled. I've got HTTP enabled where I should probably be using HTTPS. I've got a certificate issue. And so they're organized for me. I can hide all the alerts. I can hide all the warnings and really filter to uh, the security service as I as I so please. Let me go back to the home page. Finally, tile five is a list of station statistics. I have total devices. I have total points. And this is very beneficial for station creation where while a station is being created offline, you're understanding how many devices are in your network, how many points are in your network. If you're a salesperson, this really easily lets your engineer let you know how many FX 80s or 90s the job requires and what licensing you require for the job as well. All shown on tile five in the statistics pane here, as you guys can see. You also have total alarms, open alarms, and active alarms. I then want to click into tile one to show you guys how standard graphics in the Facility Explorer appliance look like. I'll click this central cooling chiller plant. Wait for that to open up here. As I'll demo here shortly, upon import of a CCT CAF file, controller application file, a chiller plant graphic is created for you where engineers and technicians don't have to create graphics anymore. They're done for them. As you can see, these graphics don't only display data, they're also massively interactive. As you can see, this graphic has four chillers. Chiller two, three, and four are currently off. Chiller one is on, and I know that because as you can see, I have flow running through it. They're also, like I mentioned, fully interactive. I can command this chiller to be from on to any other state I want. It's currently active. I can set an auto set or put it in active. I can do the same thing with chiller two, three, and four. I also have a list of statuses and commands on the left hand side for this chiller plant that I can interact with as well. OK. Down here is system information. Alarms and if these had override capabilities, I can override them. The FX appliance also takes advantage of the history service to trend data over time, and I'll show that more closely here um, as we progress in this call. I want to go back to the route just to show you guys some more standard graphics where if I click into floor one, here's a floor plan graphic. I leveraged our Johnson Controls Center of Excellence and India engineering team to help develop this graphic for me where, as you can see, I have a floor plan with zones. I can click into a zone, as you can see, VAV13, and very simply show you guys the VAV graphic file. As you can see, here is a standard VAV graphic file where a CCT CAF file is imported into the appliance. The appliance recognized which points existed in which components existed in the CAF file and automatically generated this for me. It's fully interactive. Here's a heating valve output that uh, and a heating control that I can interact with. Here's heating control. I can override it to off on a permanent or time frame period. Let's just do a one minute override. And it was currently off, so I, you know, I'm overriding it back to off. But as you can see, I can interact with it here fully. I also have set points. Right click a set point, override it, set it to auto, set it. This FX appliance also recognized that the VAV CAF file had a zone thermostat, an NS8000 in the file. Upon recognition that the file had an NS8000, this page two is created for me. Currently, the zone is at 75.9 degrees. I can fully interact with this NS8000. Okay. And so that's the standard graphics. I can show you guys here an AHU that we've created as well. Upon import of an AHU CAF file, uh, this is done uh, for me here. Uh, so those are graphics. And then if you guys have questions, please put them in the chat. 
I want to start showing live demos here to show how this is all done uh, for station creation and then some cool other uh, tools uh, down the line. So let me open up Workbench. What I've done is I've created this ENS Roots station for this demo here uh, to show you guys uh, how station creation is done to reduce engineering time for the contractor. As you can see in my config drivers, I've created a backnet network. In the backnet network, as you can see, I have a few pieces of equipment. I have HU1, 2, VAV101 through VAV202. And as you can see, if I open up one of these, go into HU1, I have an AHU graphic that I just showed here in this other station. I left AHU2 unconfigured for this demo. I've put a CCT CAF file into VAV101. I've left VAV102 unconfigured. I put a graphic into 201, and I've put a graphic into 202. I'll go into the backnet network. In the top right, you'll see the JCI Backnet Import Manager in the drop down menu. I'll go ahead and click on that. As you can see, upon the, clicking the JCI Backnet Import Manager, all the devices that are not configured that don't have CAF files imported into them show up in my JCI Import Manager. And I've left these unconfigured for this demo, where if I click into AHU2, just simply double clicking, this JCI Backnet Import Manager pop-up window appears, and I'll open it up here to demo this, where I can change the name of AHU2, but more importantly, I'll take your attention to this resource file info page, where it asks for a resource file. My resource file is currently null. I'll click on this uh, uh, choose path button here, where I can simply choose a CCT CAF file for this piece of equipment and import it into this device. So I've opened up my CCT CAF files. This is for an air handler. I'll use the AHU that I used for uh, Controls Con event uh, here last year and just hit open. Right away, what you'll recognize is the FX appliance recognize the file type. If you look at system library, it's telling me that this is an AHU that's mixed air single duct. It recognized that for you. In the import graphic type drop down menu here, you'll see kit PX graphic and kit PX graphics V2. V2 is our new graphics types that we totally recommend for new projects, but we've kept kit PX graphics in here for those retrofit jobs maybe you're putting a new controller in a wing that exists and you don't want graphics to look different for existing sites um, but for this demo purpose we'll do kit px graphics v2 mix their single duct simple air handler and i'll create new graphic file i'll leave everything else blank um, especially this create hx graphic file the FX appliance takes advantage of scalar vector graphics, meaning our graphics automatically recognize screen sizes and screen orientations and layouts. And so you don't have to create HX graphic files with the FX appliance, which are typically for phone graphic views. I'll hit OK. And wait for that to load here. Very similarly, I'll configure the VAV boxes we just did. I'll choose a VAV box CAF file that I have in my set of examples here. Let's just find one that works. Uh, let's see here. Uh, VAV box, this is the one we used for the CBC event, uh, the last one that just, just happened here. And I'll make this a kit graphics V2. It recognized this was single duct with no fan. I'll create a new file. I don't have to create an HX graphic file. I'll hit OK and wait for that to load here. As you guys can see, this is the air handler we just imported a CCT CAF file for. This is a VAV box we just imported a CCT CAF file for. I didn't have to create these graphics. The FX appliance did it for me. I'll go into AHU2 and I'll click on points. As you can see in this top header, you have the points list. 
upon importing the CCT CAF file, not only is a graphic created for me, but my point database populates. I never have to import data points again using the FX appliance. As you can see, all the points from the CCT CAF file populate in my database. Their statuses, property values, tuning policies, which I'll talk about here briefly, and the point type, if it's read only or writable. One thing I'll do is I'll click on AUX schedule. As you can see, if you drag your attention to the bottom of this AX property sheet, the AUX schedule point was automatically tagged. Engineers and technicians don't have to tag points using the FX appliance. This AUX schedule was tagged with FX occupied, FX command, and FX schedule. I didn't have to import, I didn't have to create these tags on my own. Go back here. Same thing with all the other points. Here's OC point effective occupied sensor tagged for me. On a standard import, you won't see the tuning policy name. You might have to click this drop down menu to enable it. But the reason I bring this up is because all points automatically have tuning policies applied to them. If you're not familiar with tuning policies, a tuning policy is the speed a point is written to. All the points that are in my database are automatically applied to a tuning policy. Where I'll open up our JCI BACnet tuning policies knowledge exchange document here, where all the tuning policies we apply to points are described for you guys under BACnet network tuning policy properties description, where if a facility manager or an engineer or a technician was creating a station, they would typically have to apply tuning policies on their own for all their points. And if they don't, their station can run out of whack sometimes. And so we've applied tuning policies in a very verbose fashion automatically to points that are discovered in your database. Scott, how are we doing on questions in the chat? Has anyone dropped any questions in the chat thus far? It's good if not, if it's crickets, I can assume no questions in the chat. All right. I'll actually go back to the AHU2, AHU1 graphic, or they're the same one just to continue this here. This is the JCI Point Extension Manager, where Upon import of this CAF file, you also get this JCI point extension manager, a very simple way for engineers to uh, turn on point extensions as they see fit. And actually facility managers like this as well, where they might not necessarily have to call you guys to enable a point extension for them. They can do it for themselves, where as you can see, I have outdoor air temperature. If I wanted to trend this data over time, I can right click here and enable a point extension for that point. Change of value, interval that I can set a time period for, one minute, five minute, and 30 minute. Let's just hit five minute interval. And now I can go configure that history service for that trend that I just put an extension on for outdoor air temperature. I can do same thing with alarms. I've got an out of range alarm, a status alarm for outdoor air temperature that I can very simply hit out of range for and then go back into my alarm service and simply configure that point extension. Same with totalization. I can do this with discharge air temperature. I can do it with my cooling output for a valve. I can do it for all the points that are brought into this air handler uh, via the JCI BACnet import manager. And so that's the JCI point extension manager, a very quick and easy way to enable point extensions and then go configure them, where this reduces the time required to play around with AX wire sheets, um, as the engineers on this call um, have done so in the past. I'll go back to uh, this screen. I'll save the changes we just did. Why not? I'll go back to actually HU1 graphic. Um, and that point extension manager that we saw is seen here. I have links to totalizations, alarms, history, and I can go back to home as well. Okay. 
I'll go back to my home page and click on schedules. The JCI schedule manager is built for quick schedule creation and quick linking of schedules to enable points or schedule points. This reduces the need to ever use uh, wire sheets for creating schedules and certainly editing schedules. And so I'll demo that here on this call. I can hit new schedule. I can put a schedule name in there. Let's just call this a weekly schedule. We have a few schedule types, Boolean, Enum, Numeric, Calendar, and Trigger. No need to go to, through each one of those. If you have questions about that, please reference the documentation on Knowledge Exchange. But just to show you how a schedule is created and then linked to points, I'll create a weekly schedule. Just call it Boolean and hit OK. As you can see, I just created a weekly schedule. That schedule is currently not linked to any piece of equipment or any enable point for that matter. Very simply with the FX appliance, I can highlight the schedule and it'll ask me, hey, where do you want to link the schedule to? I can hit new link. When I open new link, all the different possible links I can make with the schedule populate here for me. And actually can organize them by point name. As you can see very briefly, all the enable points populate. And actually for an engineer or technician, if they just look at this path of the point, they can understand which equipment that point is enabled for. Here's cooling enable for HU1. Here's cooling enable for HU2. Heating enable for all the VAV boxes. Uh, reheat enable for the air handlers. And so very simply, I can link this schedule to enable points as I see fit. And I can click multiple in this link manager as I want to. So let's just assume I was creating a heating schedule for these VAV boxes. Let's just click these. Link to points. I can also link to alarm inhibits and users. And then also link to a slot where I don't have to use wire sheets for this. I can link to a slot as I see fit. Slot 16 is for schedules. You might use other slots for other links, but let's just assume we're doing schedules for this hypothetical here. I'll just hit OK. Now, as you can see, this schedule we created is very easily now linked to all these heating enable points of the four VAV boxes we have in this demo station. I can edit those links very simply. I can add new links. I can delete links. But that's the JCI Schedule Manager, really built for quick uh, schedule creation and schedule linking, but also schedule editing downstream as the facility manager will use uh, when you turn over the project to him or her. I'll go back to the home page and demo our JCI link manager. So very similar to the JCI schedule manager, a source link is chosen and then links are created for you with a pop-up window, which I'll show. This is very beneficial for data sharing across the station, where sometimes an outdoor air temperature of an air handler can be shared with other pieces of equipment. Maybe you have multiple air handlers in the station and that outdoor air temperature can be shared amongst all the other air handlers in that station. And there are other examples where this is really beneficial, but whenever links have to be made for a station, we 100% recommend the JCI link manager where I can create a new link source. This can be by single point or point type. Upon clicking single point, I can click this path folder. Now it's going to ask me which point do you want to create a link for? Uh, let's just go into config drivers, backnet network, and look at this HU1. In HU1, I can pull up all the points for HU1. And let's assume I want to share this outdoor air temperature point with other points in my station. I can do this with any point that exists within the station, but I'm using outdoor air temperature as an example. And let's just hit OK. 
I can leave everything else blank and populate that outdoor air temperature in my source links database. If I want to link this point to other points in my station, very similar to the schedule manager, I simply click the point. I hit new link. Now it's telling me that, hey, you've got 70 options for linking here and you can link this point to as many points as you'd like. I can organize by point name. I can organize by path as well. I can organize by type simply by just clicking the header there as you guys saw. And I'll go ahead and find actually the other outdoor air temperature in this station. All right. As you guys remember, we have two air handlers in the station. We have one air handler, one air handler, two. The source link was for air handler one's outdoor air temperature. I can now simply link this to air handlers to outdoor air temperature. Just like the JCI schedule manager, I can link to an alarm inhibit, link to users, link to other, and I can link to a slot. And this does the wire sheet work for you. So let's just link outdoor air temperature of HU1 to outdoor air temperature of HU2, hit OK. This is a good example, but the real application here is if you have multiple points to link one point to that really reduces the time to make uh, source links and, and link to points there. Uh, so that's the JCI uh, uh, link manager that if I go back to the home page is made available to you guys very simply using uh, tile three here as I described before. All right. Hey, any any, any questions? I'm, I'm not Looking at the chat, uh, please let me know if there are any questions before we continue. Booty, there was just a couple of uh, small things in the beginning, Jim, um, about uh, any plan to move away from dash marks and the point names. That's just kind of the JCI standard, always has been. Yes. I'm not, uh, I've never heard of anything with that changing. Correct. Um, and, and I and I haven't heard of any uh, change for that either. Um, and if you guys want, we can make this a whole separate call. There is a CCT uh, tool called EasyCAF that we highly recommend to change mass edit point names if you see fit. Um, but currently with the FX tag dictionary, those dashes are, are will be there. Um, the other question that um, Jim had was uh, any color win and override regarding the graphics. Do, does the uh, does say the that again, Scott? Um, is there any color change uh, for the values when an override on graphics? Yes, 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 there are, there are. Um, let me see, I don't know if this HU one will show them. It's actually, I'll have to go into my other station. But if an override exists for a point, that value, that color will change to purple. Um, and so, yes, the answer is yes. With the kit V2 graphics for 1413, they, they, with overrides, the graphic color is interactive. Yes, yes. Any other questions there, Scott? Good? Yep. All right, perfect. I'll continue here shortly. Um, I want to go back to, uh, let's go to the root of the station uh, just to get to a home page. And then under config, you'll see this facility explorer configuration here. In the palette with standard in a JCI uh, FX appliance is the JCI spaces, which I had open, but just to show you guys here, this JCI spaces module. And this is our recommended way for creating hierarchies in Niagara using the FX appliance. We've developed space routes and equipment routes, and I'll show you guys how this works here shortly. But the point of the JCI space route and equipment route is to build space and equipment relationships in stations where you as the engineer or the technician can easily build space and equipment relationships to understand which equipments are serving spaces, which equipments are parent or children to other equipments. And then very simply after that, after, after creating those relationships, a hierarchy will populate for us, which I'll demo here shortly, 
as you can see, my hierarchy is currently empty. So what I'll do is I'll open up the Facility Explorer, drag a space route onto there, and drag an equipment route onto there. OK. I'll go into the equipment route. Uh, at face value, you'll see no equipment populating. I'll right click the equipment route we just dragged into here and hit actions and build equipment list. You'll see build equipment graphic. You'll see build all equipment graphics, which I'll show here shortly. But the first thing in equipment route is to build equipment list. And I'll do that. Right now, you probably don't see anything. You have to double click the equipment route for the list of equipment to populate. What you'll see is, as you can see on my screen, is all the equipment in the station populate in my equipment route. I've got two air handlers. I've got four VAV boxes. More importantly, the FX appliance recognized that I had two air handlers in the station and grouped them together under this air handler, call it a folder. And now it's up to the engineer, whoever is creating the station, to build uh, parent relationships with equipment. Where I can hit VAV 101 and I can hit change parent down here. I know VAV 101 is served by AHU 1. So I can simply hit this drag down menu under select new parent and put it under HU1. As you can see now, VAV 101 is a parent of HU1. And actually, if you drag your attention down to the served by box, VAV 101 is served by HU1. I can hit VAV 102 and change its parent as well. And I'll put that under HU1 as well. So now under air handler one, I have my two VAV boxes. This is also very scalable. As you saw in this live demo, I just did it for one at a time. If I have multiple pieces of equipment that report up to one piece of equipment, I can multiple click them. Here's VAV 201, here's VAV 202. I just use the control button on my keyboard to select multiple. I can hit change parent. Under the select new parent, I can select AHU2. I can hit move. Now, as you can see in my equipment route, I have an air handler that is serving VAV 101 and VAV 102. They are a parent in this equipment uh, route, but also under the served by, as you can see, they're served by the equipment accordingly. Same with VAV 201 served by AHU2. Same with VAV202 served by HU2. And actually, if I had a chiller or a central plant in my list of equipment, I don't for this demo station, I could simply right click HU1 and HU2 and make that parent child relationship to a central plant or chiller as I see fit. And so this goes down multiple rows, if you will, subordinate of subordinate pieces of equipment are able to make child parent relationships upstream. I just don't have a chiller here uh, to show that example. And if I did that, actually, what I'll be able to see is VAV 101 is served by HU1, is served by the hypothetical chiller above it. You would see all the served by relationships for that piece of equipment. HU1 would be served by chiller one. HU2 would probably be served by the same chiller, depending on how the building is engineered. And so that's the equipment route. A very easy way to build equipment parent-child relationships that goes to the subordinate, subordinate, subordinate levels. There's really no limit to this feature. And we're going to revisit this very shortly after I configure our spaces route. So I'll go into spaces route here. As you can see, no spaces are populated, and it's up to the engineer to create those spaces. Very simply, I can hit new space, as you can see here in the bottom. It asks me what space type do I want to create? As you guys know, we have two air handlers and four VAV boxes. Let's just assume that each air handler was serving a floor. So I can create a space type calling it floor and space name is floor one. I also know I have two floors and two air handlers, so I can create two floors. 
I can use this auto increment function, excuse me. I can use this auto increment function to create two floor space types for me. It adds space. As you can see, floor one is created. As you can see, floor two is created. I'll click into floor one and add a new space. Let's just assume VAV 101 and VAV 102, which are served by Air Handler 1, are serving floor one. And let's just assume VAV 101 and VAV 102 are their own rooms. So let's find a space type called room and call it room 101. We'll create quantity two, auto increment. As you can see under floor one, I have room 101 and room 102. What I'll do is the same thing for floor two. By simply clicking floor two, I can make children's spaces for it by hitting new space. Uh, let's just find the floor space type and call this floor 201, auto increment and hit, hit quantity two. And as you can see, floor 201 and floor 202, sorry, this should say room. These should say room. I can very easily change those here, room 201, room 202, hit save. Uh, same thing here, room 202, room 202, hit save. Okay, so we've just created parent-child relationships in the spaces. Now it's up to us to assign equipment to these spaces. Let's hit floor one, for example. And let's say floor one is served by air handler one. Let's hit add. Let's say floor two is served by air handler two. Right? Let's hit add. As you can see, if I hit floor one, it's space served by HU1. If I hit floor two, it's space served by HU2. More specifically, let's hit room 101 and hit served by VAV 101. Let's hit room 102 and hit served by VAV 102. We'll do the same thing with these here. Room 201 served by VAV 201. Room 202 served by VAV 202. And this is as granular as you guys want to make it. I can take room 101 and room 102. Yes, they're served by their VAVs, but they're also served by air handlers. So I can ha hit room 101 and room 102 served by HU1. I can hit room 201, 202 served by HU2. This is as granular, granular as you want to make it. Let's hit save. Okay. So after you've configured the equipment route and after you've configured the space route, very simply, let's go back into the equipment route and right click it and hit actions. Under actions, you'll see a button called build all equipment graphics. Let's hit that. And under space route, let's right click that and hit build all space graphics. This is gonna tie everything together. Let's go to the equipment route. As you see, for your customer, an equipment parent-child relationship is built for you. All the air handlers, HU1, VAV101, VAV102, a very easy way for space and equipment navigation. Let's go back here, HU2, with quick access to VAV101, VAV2, VAV201 in this example. Let's go back to equipment root, air handler. If I click this icon here, I have status values for the AHU1 that we just put into the equipment root. A very easy way to create equipment parent-child relationships. We also created space root graphics. Let's hit space root. We have floor one, we have floor two. Your facility manager can explore their entire site using the space route. Floor one served by HU1. These are both hyperlinks. I can click HU1 and get to that graphic. Let's go back here. But I can click floor one, and I know floor one has room 101 and room 102 in it. I can click into those equipment graphics under the space route, and I can hit this icon for VAV and HU information. But upon creating equipment in space routes, 
I've created graphics for facility managers to quickly navigate their station based off spaces, based off equipment, and based off the relationship. More importantly, for engineers using the FX appliance, they never have to create hierarchies on their own. If I go into the hierarchies here, and I right click and refresh tree node, what you'll see is a hierarchy is created for me. Air handlers, HU1, and I can click into that, takes me to air handler. Spaces, space route, floor one, room 101, all the points for room 101, all the points for room 102, floor two, room 201, all the points for room 201 and 202. A hierarchy is created for me after building equipment and space routes. Not only giving a facility manager the quick ability to navigate the building or site via the equipment and space routes, but also creating hierarchies for them as well. The name of the game with the Facility Explorer Appliance is productivity. And as you guys saw with the set of tools I demoed here on this demo, creating a station uh, can save a ton of time. And not only for the engineer or technician, but also for the facility manager to navigate their buildings. Uh, using the FX Appliance Solution Navigator and CCT creates the integrated tool set. And as you guys can see, the name of the game with Johnson Controls outside of Facility Explorer is saving time to engineer, saving time to navigate buildings, and making everybody's lives a little bit easier. So um, if there are any questions, please let me know. I'll pass over to Scott, closing remarks, questions. Go ahead. Yeah, there's a couple of questions in the chat yeah. here. Um, Perfect. One was, uh, will it flag you if links are made to wrong parent from another child that's not associated with that parent after you set up routes? Can you can you can you ask that again, please? Will it flag you if links are made to wrong parent from another child that's not associated with that parent after you set up routes? That's a good question. I, I've never ran into that uh, for demos like this. I assume it would, and we can figure that out here by just checking that here. But I, I assume it would. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure. It's something we're going to have to play around with. Um, but intuitively, it would. Uh, another question here was, do the kit PX graphics V2 utilize UX media? Yes. So the kit PX graphics are actually generated. Well, so with the kit PX V1, these were outsourced graphic file types. Um, with the kit PX V2, they're all in-house. So what we've created is in-house graphics. Uh, we've utilized our own packages. Yeah. Any other questions? If not, if you think of something, you can email um, myself or Moody or, or Brody, and um, you know we'll make sure we'll get those answered for you. I uh, thank, thank you guys for coming. We got, we got one more here. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Are logic graphics created for the cat files for troubleshooting or sequence of operation verification? Uh, they're not standard. No, that's something you'll have to create on your own. We have a few. Um, interactive graphics where, yes, they do respond to overrides like we mentioned earlier, but more specific logic type graphics will have to be generated on your own. Okay. Anything else? I appreciate everybody's time and um, like I said, any other questions, you can email and we'll make sure we get those answered for you. Thank you, guys. Good job. Right, Thank much. you. Yep, of course. You guys have a great rest of your day.